This is Software 3 General Options. Moving to the General Options tab, which is the third tab in the programming software, you're going to find several system settings. We're going to start at the top in the upper left hand corner where it says Panel Name. The panel name is used in the subject line of the emails that the Fire Alarm Control Panel sends, as well as in the reports. This field is limited to 40 characters, which can be used for your panel location description or job description. For example, the panel that is in my office, I've given it a panel name of West Elementary School. Now, as I mentioned, this is going to be used in the emails that this fire panel sends to me or in the reports. So I'm going to bring up my email now so you can see where this is used. Looking at my email account, I have all my emails from my Potter Fire control panels coming into a particular folder. So they're all in one location. As you can see in the From column, it's, they're listed under the particular email address of the Fire Alarm Control Panel. If you are receiving emails from several Fire Alarm Control Panels, it's hard to distinguish which one is which, which is where the panel name comes in handy. As you can see in the subject line of this account, I have emails coming from West Elementary School, these are status emails, and emails coming from a panel at a McDonald's number 2345, also status emails. So that's where this becomes very handy, is in this email, being able to distinguish what, the, what panel is sending you information. This information is also seen in the reports. So if I bring up a report, you'll see that the panel name is the second line of information. Again, this is limited to 40 characters. It is stored in the panel, and it is, this is used for your email and for reports. Directly under panel name, we have the system idle message. By clicking the enable message button and typing in a description, this message will reflect on the front of the panel on the LCD screen. You have 16 characters to customize the message that will display on the front of the LCD screen. Underneath the system idle message, you'll find a spot for the default outgoing email address. In this location, you can enter an email address that can be accessed through the keypad of the Fire Alarm Control Panel. In the Data Transfer menu of the Fire Alarm Control Panel, option number 7, you can select to send detector status, history, a test email, or the configuration file. In any of those options, you can select to send it to the default outgoing email address, which will then reference the email address as programmed into this box under default outgoing email. Underneath default outgoing email address, you'll find display events. The default is initial event. Your other option here when hitting the drop down menu is newest event. This refers to the order the events that are active on the system are displayed on the fire alarm control panel's LCD screen. When you choose initial event, when you approach the panel, the first event you will see will be the very first event that has occurred on the system. If you choose newest event, when you approach the panel, you will see the most recent event that has occurred on the system. In either option, you can use the up and down arrows on the keypad to view all the events. Your next option is SLC Blink. The default is normal. The other options when you click on the down arrow is slow and off. SLC Blink refers to the blinking of the LED light on your SLC devices, sometimes referred to as the heartbeat blink. Normal blink is about every four to five seconds when the fire alarm control panel pulls the device. If you choose slow, the LED will blink about every 30 seconds. The fire alarm control panel still pulls the device every four to five seconds, but the LED only blinks every about 30 seconds. If you choose the option of off, the LED on the device won't blink at all. In the event that the device is active, whether it's a smoke detector or a module, the LED will latch on as it should. One thing to note with SLC Blink, this setting is system-wide and will affect all SLC devices. This includes PAD100 protocol and NOMI protocol. If you are using only PAD100 SLC protocol devices, you can individually disable the LED per device via the points section of the programming software. Again, that is for PAD100 devices only. The LED for NOMI protocol devices can only be disabled through SLC Blink found in general options. Your next option is the alarm verification time, and this is in seconds. This is where you set the time for your alarm verification on your smoke detector devices. Each individual smoke detector can be set up to activate under alarm verification. You can put in any number here between 30 and 60 seconds. Each smoke detector can individually be set up for alarm verification. That designation occurs under the points section of the software. 
Next we move to water flow delay, and this is in seconds. The default is zero. Adding time here will add time to the delay that is already built into the water flow device. Next is AC report delay, and this is in hours. This delay refers to the delay when an AC loss is sent to the central station. The default is one. What this means is that the panel will wait one hour before sending the loss of AC signal to central station. By clicking on the drop down, you can select anywhere from half hour to 30 hours as your delay. You can also select no delay. If you select no delay on the loss of AC, the trouble signal will send immediately. Moving to the next column at the top, we see door holder low AC dropout delay. The default is 15 seconds. Clicking on the down arrow, your options are no delay, 15 seconds, 1 minute, and 5 minutes. A NAC circuit on the fire alarm control panel can be programmed as a door holder low AC dropout. What this means is that it will hold open the door holders for a period of time as programmed in this section, either 15 seconds, 1 minute, or 5 minutes, when there is a loss of AC at the fire alarm control panel. For example, when there's a generator on site, the 15 second door holder low AC dropout delay can be the time between the loss of AC and the time the generator starts up, keeping the doors magnetized between that time period. Next we have auto test time. The default is 2 a.m. This is the time the panel will send the 24-hour test signal to Central Station, whether using dialer or IP. This is also the time the test email will be sent. Just to the right of auto test time, we have auto test interval. Auto test interval is where you can define the time between the test signals being sent to Central Station. The default is 24 hours. If you are required to do a shorter test time, you can set this auto test interval timer anywhere between 1 and 24 hours. Next is strobes active when silence. If you would like the strobes to remain active when the panel is silenced, you need to check this box. The default is unchecked. When it is unchecked, when you press the silence button at the fire alarm control panel, both the strobes and the horns will silence. If you want the strobes to remain on, make sure to check this box. And when you silence the panel, the strobes will remain active. Next we have enable power line clock synchronization. This keeps the clock synchronized to the 120 volt 60 hertz power circuit coming into the fire alarm control panel. It is recommended to keep this checked unless you have power that is not 120 volt or 60 hertz. The next general option is enable CO tone temp4 on enunciators. The default is checked. What this means is that when you have a CO event at the fire alarm control panel, the enunciators will sound a temp4 pattern. This is only of the enunciators, both the fire alarm control panel and any remote enunciators, and this is on a CO alarm or a CO supervisory event that has occurred at the fire alarm control panel. Next is low temp events are supervisories. When this box is checked, any heat detector that is designated for low temp via the point section will enunciate a supervisory signal at the fire alarm control panel versus a trouble signal when a low temperature event occurs. Next is disable 24 hour PZT resound. When this box is checked, it prevents the sounder on the enunciators from resounding after 24 hours when an off normal condition remains on the system. Your next option is display time as AM PM. That is the default that is checked. If you uncheck this box, the time will display as a 24 hour clock on the front of the fire alarm control panel and the remote enunciators. Again, the default is checked. Next we have synchronize to network time. The default is checked. When this box is checked, the panel will automatically obtain the time from the network that it is connected to. If the panel is not connected to a network, you will have to set the time through the control panel keypad. You can also define the SNTP server in which the panel obtains the time from. You can always use the default which is listed as seen here. Your next option is selecting the time zone. The default will be central standard. Clicking on the down arrow allows you to select any of the time zones. Most commonly you'll be selecting eastern, mountain standard, pacific time zones. The option underneath that is enable daylight savings time. The default is checked, which means that the panel will automatically adjust for daylight savings time. The settings right underneath that are the current daylight savings time adjustments done in March and November. If this needs to be changed in the future, this can be adjusted in the software. That concludes the General Options tab. For more information on the programming software, please refer to the other recorded modules. 
The next video in the software series is Sensitivity. For more information on programming, please refer to the installation manual and find other resources on our website www.pottersignal.com.